working on our kitchen countertop that we have added a faux marble technique to. And we're working on a video and I've been doing that for a little bit, but we wanted to show you some of the progress that we've made and what we have. And you can see behind me where we're at. And Melissa's on the other side working. I'll show you what she's doing in a minute. And I'm gonna show you what adding on our absolutely gorgeous antiquing gel in the color whitewash is gonna do. Hi Brooke, how are you today? All right, we're gonna add it on right while you guys are watching. Hey Deb Owen, how are you doing? And see you in a while. Gonna add on the whitewash and it's gonna be a sealer as well as tone. So right now we have, um, I'm gonna flip this down so you can see it, but actually we've made a really pretty looking marble. We've only used two colors. We base coated this with our color called Colosseum, and I'll grab that for you. And the beginning was already a gray, so it was kind of a, you know, the old standard gray Formica countertop. We added Colosseum, so about empty, but you can see that. And then on the top of that, we've added cobblestone. Let me grab that, let me show you that one. So very tonal and very similar in color. But that's what we wanted. We didn't want a lot of contrast. So we've had these two colors, a warm gray, basically, warm grayish white, and then a gray. So what we're doing is, I'm, yeah, 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 she's that? stealing my brush. I thought you had mine. So we're going to add over that, the whitewash. And whitewash is a sealer. It's an antiquing gel, so it can be removed uh, if you're using it on projects. But here we're brushing it on, and I'm gonna brush it on in two directions. I'm gonna actually brush it one way and then turn and brush the other, and that's to camouflage any brush strokes. And it just kind of dissipates, it's amazing stuff. I've already added it right here on the backsplash. So the black backsplash, as you can imagine, is the hardest part to get to. And because of it being a vertical surface, it's the most tedious and most aggravating part of this project. So I, I also want to show you another tip. Hang on. We're using the true applicator and then we're using a small stamp. I'll show you that. That's it. We have everything ready to go. We're using the stamper here, and this is a little uh, silicone stamp. We'll be actually showing you how to get one of these very inexpensively. Uh, we've used a brand name and we found our own. So we're gonna help you out with that one and save you a lot of money because you only need this one little piece rather than buying a big piece of that. So stay tuned for that information. We'll be sharing that with you, maybe even including it in some of these product kits that we're gonna put together. So um, brushing on the antiquing gel and even doing the stamping, get a small artist brush and I'll tell you why. Because when you're back in this corner, you can only go so far, and the, again, the backsplash is being the hardest part. You can only go so far with your coloring and only down so far. So you got this little edge. So what I did was just take my paper plate, poured out some paint, dampen this brush, and just kind of wiggled it in there and just kind of blended it up and down into the crack. So that softened that so there's not a hard line there. You definitely don't want a hard line in that area. It's definitely a dead giveaway that you've painted it. I also ran that brush around the very top, the back edge here and down into the corners where, again, I couldn't reach, almost like painting a wall. You know how you have walls that intersect? You have to do something in there with a trim brush, same with it using the artist brush. So on to why we came here, uh, using the antiquing gel. Just wanna show you how amazing this softens this. Although I like the colors that are going on here, um, I really wanted this to look more like Carrera Marble in a white with a, a subtle gray. Well, you get carried away, you start putting this on, and it turns gray rather than white, but overall, it still has a white tone in this room. So. Putting on this product makes this turn back to a white with gray tones versus a, a gray with white tones, if that makes sense. So brush it on. I just got to right here in this corner, so I want to show you guys live what this was doing. So just brush it on, and again, work it down into the corners. You can't leave corners bare because, again, it's going to show. You're going to tell that you painted this. You don't want to do that. So the lighter you want it, the more you can kind of control how much of this you put on. But I just brush it on and now it's gonna stay on. You're not removing it, but just go in there and up, go up. You can see what I'm doing with the brush strokes. You can see them in there and then go back over it. Just do a hash, hash marks in it. And as that begins to dry, just continue that process till you don't see any brush marks. And that's how you kind of top coat it. I left it on full because we want this added protection on the countertop as well as the toning effect that it does. So kind of two, a twofold two-fold win here versus just adding a clear. And something to remember about adding clear top coats is the fact that they can yellow over time. Even water-based top coats tend to yellow, especially when you're trying to create something in white. And if you guys are even considering doing a resin, resin is not, even though you'll see them, that they often say on the label UV um, stable, or they're not going to yellow over time. All resins yellow over time. Um, some don't as quickly. And in your kitchen, obviously, you're not going to be 
in the sunlight, but believe me, every room has sun coming in, so it will begin to amber and yellow, and especially like in cracks where it's heavy and so on, you'll start to see it, especially on the white. So you could top coat this, you could add urethane. Urethane is going to yellow. Anything in the thane, ending in the word thane, is going to yellow. That's what it is. The polyurethane tends to amber and yellow over time. So this is a perfect alternative to not adding urethanes or resins that tend to yellow over time. So just so you have that in your mind, why use this, that's why. <laughs> that's one of the big reasons why to use this. Now, um, it's also going to have a very low luster matte sheen, just like the paint. It's not going to have a shine, and you don't want this countertop to shine. Marble has a sheen, not a shine. All stones have a sheen, not a shine, unless you have a high polished granite or something in your home. You know what I'm talking about. But most of them are either home or they're, they're uh, just a soft polish on them. They're definitely not made or meant to shine. They're made to look rather flat. So again, just continue adding this until you're satisfied with the tone that you're getting and you'll still see the subtle uh, marble techniques coming through. It just tones down that gray a little bit and gets it a little closer to the back to the uh, cobblestone that we added over the top. It's gonna make the two just kind of meld together beautifully. So I really love what this did. You know, we used this on the counter downstairs when we did the bathroom countertop and it really helped tie that together. We've had several customers posting their own experience doing the countertop in their own bathrooms in their own home and they've had equal uh, great results or even better actually than our own results which I love to see. You can see I'm just kind of making a random brush marks here until I don't see brush marks. This product is just amazing the way it controls and it doesn't leave a build up or start to gum up or roll up. It just, it just wants to lay down. The more you brush it, the more it just lays right down and just kind of blends away. So you don't even see marks where it stops and starts. So it's, a, you know, because it's an, a, a wipeable product, it also blends equally as well. So I really love what it's doing. I hope you guys do too. Melissa is just pounding away over here, and this was my way of getting out of doing any more of the texturing. I said, I'm going to add the top coat. I'm gonna add. She knows exactly what I was doing. She knew exactly what I was trying to do is get out of adding any more than stamping the texture. This is a pretty good sized kitchen, so we kind of got to hold the U shape to go around over here and all that, but I was trying my best to add value without doing any more stamping. So here we are. Keep on rolling. So again, you don't have to do this as dark. You can do it as light as you want, just whatever the look is you're after. And hopefully you can see that. I'll kick it around here a little bit more. It is softening it. Uh -huh, it does soften it tremendously. And in it. So just keep going and pay attention to that old backsplash. You kind of stipple that to give it a little more reality. And give it an up, up swipe and then give it a cross hatch. Just do both. If you see marks, just rub them out and go in the opposite direction and then just come right back over it so you don't see them. Now she's coming over here to help us. So she's got, if you have questions, ask them. People are wondering if this is covering all the texture. You no, no, we're not at all. Add. Nope, it is it, softening the it's texture. Soft, it's making it look more realistic. Yeah, absolutely. The realistic. harsher the pattern, the less realistic I think it looks. So. Yeah, now, it, it depends on what you're after. If you want a granite look, you know, certain granites are soft. Uh, certain ones are stronger, depends. You know, but the look I wanted, again, was clear marble, which is very soft, and just a tiny bit of pattern comes through, and you have to almost look to see it. I wanted a white-looking countertop, but I didn't want a solid white countertop, so that's why we opted to do with the cobblestone and Coliseum. You could choose any color here if you want. You know, you could warm the background up, maybe using Manor House or whatever if you want something more in the yellow family. And marble tends to be sometimes um, in the yellow family, certainly. Different ones are different. See how that is over in the corner? You can still see lots of texture. Tons of texture. See, is this giving them a good example right here on the front where they see it more down? Let's see. Let's see if I can. And again, I'm overlapping some of this mm -hmm. and some I'm not. It just depends. If I want to take more out, I'll just keep on adding more over it. Um, Connie wants to know, could you roll the antique? I guess she's talking about the antiquing gel. I, I would not roll I the would. antiquing gel. You yeah. don't want it thick. You're just trying to get a thin, mm -hmm. sheer, semi-transparent layer, yeah. which is what this product is. Mm -hmm. It's semi-transparent. 
and it's allowing us to still see the pattern. If you roll it, you're going to get a hard covering, and that's not what you're after. Mm -hmm. uh, Ginger, the cabinets are an abbey. There you go. So let's keep moving here. I'll try to cover this whole area so you can see it completed. So see the backsplash with and without. See that? Can you see the difference? How I've modeled and kind of not so great as this one. I think I was getting tired on this one. It shows. <laughs> but look at that already. Look at the reality that brought to that. Is that did you see that? Mm -hmm. Now the brush strokes are showing right there right now. And I know that. So I'm going to go back to that. I think this is almost kind of like putting a beauty filter on a, on your oh, face. Oh my goodness. Yes. Absolutely. Great example. That's what we're doing. The beauty filter in this yep. baby. We're mm -hmm. taking a lot of age off of her. Mm -hmm. I'll start using those. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I look at all these people and go, wow, I know they don't look that young. Surely, God, they, they're older, older than me. <laughs> I look at um, certain people and uh, you guys are entertainers and I go, wow, she looks incredible. Poor her 80s. <laughs> Jane Fonda. I'm like, ah, what in the world has that woman do? Let me try to zoom in on she this for great. you guys. So you can still see lots of texture. Are they thinking we killed it all? They were thinking. They were thinking. <laughs> no, we're just, we're not killing it. Let me come over here. My phone was not working and see if I can show you here. Yeah, I kind of already got that and that. See, you still got lots of texture. Very subtle now. But look how realistic that looks. That does not look painted. Let me see if I can come out a little ways. Now you're done you at this see? point too, girls. Yeah. This is it. You mm -hmm. don't have to do anything else to it. It's done. Guys, girls. Sorry. I've <laughs> got some men on here nowadays. Yeah, William's on here. Hi, William. Yeah, so we've got lots of layers in here. We've got some veining. we got a little bit of everything. We'll, we'll share this video very it's, shortly. We did subtle colors on purpose, so it's difficult to to catch it all here. See if I can get back to where Paula's working here. Where are you? I'm sorry, guys. We so impromptu. We don't even have our lights up here, so we're casting all kinds of shadows here. Yeah, we weren't planning on going live. I just couldn't. I could not show you this because it looked so good. She couldn't resist. Plus, I was trying to get out of stamping. <laughs> Trying to make her really believe I was trying to get out of stem. You're gonna need some serious beauty, beauty filters going on over on that piece I did, I think. It needs some help. Well, you know, the guys, we talk about this mm -hmm. often. When you're doing this, it's almost almost better to have the same person do yep. the stamping because uh -huh. it's hard to match someone else's hand and yep. it's just difficult. That's why I'm I needed, struggling. I need help. I already knew that, but I'll let you do it. Let me tell you. <laughs> I'll figure I'll repair it. I'll add my stamp on top of yours. <laughs> At least I got you some base coats. You got me going. something on there. I'm better. That's better. <laughs> so we've gotten several techniques for you put together. This is technique two that we're finishing right now, and we'll post those with three different techniques to help you solve your countertop problems. And that will be a home top video that you'll see soon, and we'll be posting our own version of that, and probably a less edited version of that, talking about more products and trying to help you get through that. And back in that little corner, you see that little spot? Yep. I want them to see that. Can you see that corner? Look in there. Let's see. You see that corner? It just shines like a new dime right there. You see that? Doesn't have enough paint of the uh, toning on it. So let's go fix that. Work your brush down in there. And we'll leave a little more in there. As a matter of fact, I'm going to have to take a small brush and do that because it's trying to lift it. So keep one of these handy. Always. I thought I had already done that back in there. But evidently, the brush is lifting it right off as I leave it. So look back at it and see what stands out to you as a negative. And if something's too bold, soften it. Just hit it with another little bit of the whitewash. Mm -hmm. That's the great thing. You can't mess it up then. I think this looks great. Now, she's not an easy customer on this. If she likes it, that's pretty good because she's not she's not easy on this. I would have this in my kitchen. Yeah, I would too. That's my judge of it if it's good or not. Would I have it in my home? Yes. 
then that's the way to know. Yeah. If you say, "Hey, I, I want you to do it," but mm -hmm. I wouldn't have it, then that's not a good that's not a good measure. <laughs> uh, Liz wants to know what about painting a ceramic tile backsplash, and does she need a top coat? Oh, absolutely, you can paint a ceramic tile backsplash. We can paint stone, anything with this paint, and mm -hmm. you don't really need to put anything over it. Mm -hmm. Unless you want to create something like we're doing here. If you want to get down into, maybe it, uh, if it's been laid up with a grout, you want to get down to the grout lines and add some detail, you can do that. I've seen a lot of people use the uh, weathered wood antiquing gel over a backsplash to, you know, back in to enhance the grout after you paint it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of up to you what yeah. you want to create there. But if, yes, you're, if your tile great. is sealed and really slick, then I would definitely use that deglosser to prep. Yeah, definitely. Um, the sander deglosser. Now what she means by that is if it's a glossy type of a tile, if it's a matte, more of a terracotta, looks like a very dry looking tile without a shine to it, you don't have to do anything, mm -hmm. just paint. Well, you still have to degrease it. Yeah, clean it. Because it's I would personally sure. use the deglosser regardless, but. Old Paula here, yeah, I would too. <laughs> <laughs> I painted my own backsplash mm -hmm. at home and painted even around my stove. Now. And I'm gonna tell you up front, I'm the worst when it comes to cleaning. And, and the reason being is mine was real in and out. You know, it was a fossil stacks, fossil stone, and it was not easy to clean. I sprayed it down some, I don't know, but I didn't do much scrubbing. But it's held up great and done very well around my stove. I touched it up the other day, and I'll tell you why, because the cleaning lady come in there and she wiped off things that had settled on it in grease, and it made a line or two on it. I'm assuming that was from grease being on there that let the paint go. So I cleaned that a little bit and touched it back up. Mm -hmm. Great. So, mm -hmm. hey, that's the beauty of it. You got something white behind your stove where you mm -hmm. cook, you know you're going to get food spatters. Mm -hmm. And I have, I cook all the time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it got a little something she wiped off. And there we made a spot in it, but it was easy to repair. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul, on the camera, that line is looking really bright white. And but person, here, not looking, it looks great. Yeah. That line, really, mm -hmm. I, it was dark a minute ago. So I lined it back up. And I'll tell you, too, uh, Liz, I have... I don't have a backsplash currently, but I do have the walls oh, here between my counters and the uh, cabinets painted with the Coliseum on one paint, and it's super scrubbable. I scrubbed the grease off of it. I scrubbed the sauce off of it. <laughs> Doesn't hurt it. So, yes. Um, it looks, oh, that line looks bright white on the camera. Oh, it's so funny. funny. It built in person. No, it, it really looks great doesn't. in person. It actually really mm -hmm. looks really believable. And I've got, I gotta leave it. I can't change it because it looks too good. Yeah. So on this front edge, good God, don't look in this dishwasher, <laughs> please. Um, let's show you this because I think that's a good seeable surface there. Here was this edge, and it's not probably done as good of a patterning as some of the other we've done up top. Kind of quickly hit it. But let's just add the add the white knee on there just to soften and blend it out. So I'm doing hash marks back and forth. Okay. Just don't get that brushed edge and then don't hit your upper edge to make it look brushed either. Connie says, are we gonna put a top coat on top of this? Um, this is a top coat. Antique can gel. We've got top coats galore built into everything here. This so. is a top coat right here. This is another layer. Mm -hmm of wear and top coat surface. We've probably got four or five layers here between all the patterning, the base coat, and of course we prepped good. It's all about that. You gotta get that surface clean underneath and then this paint's gonna bond and stick right to it if you've used a good prep, meaning using the sanding deglosser and then putting this on top is gonna give you a lot of wear surface and will hold mm -hmm. up great for you. If you've got all the oils off the surface, you're gonna be in good shape. I think they're talking about this is what I think you're talking about here. That's actually in the pattern. Oh, those are some lines that mm -hmm. look hot to them? Yeah. That's oh, just, we'll kill them. Yeah, that's just some patterning there. Yeah, I think it's where I laid mm -hmm. down the feather, actually. Mm -hmm. got a little on it. Uh-huh. I like it. I think it kind of uh -huh. looks like the spot. <laughs> it's it's driving them crazy. <laughs> it's funny what the camera's picking up. Uh -huh. It's not really in person. You don't really uh -huh. see that. It looks like veining in person. It looks good in person. Uh-huh. So, yeah, you can't. You can't really judge that crack or that because mm -hmm. it kind of makes it realistic. So I don't want to kill it because mm -hmm. those those marks are in natural stone. Mm -hmm. You know, things that are kind of like calcified mm -hmm. little lines yep. and so on. That's the thing. In DIY, you got to accept that it's not going to be 100% perfect. Especially when you're doing patterns, it's not going to be 100% perfect. Well, there, yeah, this is a random but, natural pattern. But the perfect. stone is not perfect either. Right. You're not copying something perfect. 
ain't a whole lot perfect in this life, guys. If you're holding yourself to the perfect mark, you're going to sure be disappointed in this life. <laughs> in so many ways. So many ways. So, so many ways. All right. Here's my, don't look at that stove. Here's my patterning job here. Yeah. She rubbed it with white. Or rubbed it with water. That's one reason mm -hmm. that it kind of killed it back. So I had to I'm going to go show you what you need to put to it and okay. you'll be happy. All right. So here's one thing we learned that we were tipping it. Hang on. Let me get this poured out here. We were brushing on the pattern, which is fine. But rather than brushing, since we're so low on paint, I'm going to take the brush and knock it out. You think we'd have to paint this place? Ginger, we did paint the dishwasher to you. I right. know us, we paint everything. <laughs> Alright, so the best way to actually get your pad ready for stamping is use the true applicator. I poured out some of Coliseum background color into this paper plate, all right, and then I put it on this. And the reason being is this thing has not got a real deep texture. You see that? It's mm -hmm. kind of thin. So if you if you paint it with a paintbrush, which I was doing over here, I just learned this technique, is you just use this and just dab it on. And so that doesn't get down in the grooves, and then you'll get a little cleaner. So let's come over here and look at it now. Mm -hmm. I gotta go quick to your, to your thing. That's what it's lacking. It's lacking that upper shade. Mm -hmm. Now, if those are too hot, you're gonna give it a minute and you're gonna go back and soften it a little bit. And it does start to stick to your glove eventually. <laughs> Which is kind of nice. So just lacking that extra dimension, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I have to soften mine more than yours. You softened it out too much, yeah. She added dampened her sponge and everything. Mm -hmm. And see back here where there's brush strokes? That you definitely got to kill. Mm -hmm. See that in the background? You can't have that. Because then that don't look like stone. That looks painted. And now I feel like I'm being critiquing her job. That's I'm it. not. I just want you guys to see what I'm saying. So this was an example of things you got to kind of work through. You can't mess this up. Seriously. So when in doubt, add stamp. three more layers and then you've got it. <laughs> when in doubt, stamp it some more. <laughs> so this is the background color. So just so you know, this is, this is the base coat. We're stamping the base coat on over the uh, call, the call stone that she added earlier. Again, we're going to show you all the steps in a nice little easy video so you can digest all this if you decide to do it. Sheila, um, hot pans are something tricky in general for countertops anyways. You can't even your pan on anything. I wouldn't recommend it on your even natural stone. marble or your laminate countertops. It's not going to be pretty if you do. So Use the trigger. Same thing here. Don't set hot pans on. You don't set hot pans on your countertop, surely. Alright, I'm running out of paint. <laughs> yeah. So that that helps. That's just your little. That's just your little pad. You know, it just gives you a little stamp. Life easy right there. Mm -hmm. I'll have to keep returning back to my paint. Now, once this is dry enough, in a moment, I will go through here and soften this thing just a minute. So I get some soft blends, mm -hmm. and then I'll soften the whole thing down with the antique gel. I like that little bit there in the front. It's got some more white too. This it's pretty. Mm -hmm. I like it too. It looks real good. Mm -hmm. So you don't want it to all match. You don't want this to give the paper bag look. You know, guys, this is not the everything on this countertop looks a consistent pattern. That's not what we're trying to do. You, that would make it look just like the paper, the, the uh, plastic sack look. That we don't want. You know, we want this to have variety. So. Consistent, right? Mm -hmm. Needs to look the same over there as it does over here. I'm gonna 
soften that all with a little brush. This is a hard little spot to film in here between the fridge and you. It's not a great spot. And the dirty floor between the fridge and the cabinet I keep getting that's killing me. Yeah. I have to pull this fridge out and clean behind here. Oh. We're going to have to get somebody to pull this fridge out. All right, so <laughs> I'm just using my lid. I'm getting in here. Just going to soften that where she got a little brush happy back there. And I took a, I dampened this brush so there's some movement in this. This is the actual paint, not the antiquing gel. Either would work. Doesn't have to just be this. You see what I'm killing there? Mm-hmm. Just wiggling the brush, basically, blending it out. Paint's gonna have a little more um, opacity mm -hmm. to it mm -hmm. than the antique gel. See, I didn't do that because I thought the antique gel was gonna do that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Good cover. <laughs> she thought I was right behind her hey, with that antique gel. I was having a hard time reaching back there. Let's remember. Oh, I forgot. I forgot the issues we did with you. <laughs> Old short people issues we got going on here. Oh, Jennifer's asking a question about uh, food safe. You want to talk about that? Food safe. Yeah. Um, not really sure when you say food safe, what anything means. Um, to say you're going to lay food down on your countertop and prep, I don't think anything's food safe for that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's water based paint. So it's food safe as anything else in your kitchen would be. And it's sealed. And it's sealed. So yeah, um, I don't think anybody preps on their countertop. Mm -hmm. And food safe is, you know, it's not got any toxicity in it any more than anything else. And you know, your kitchen cabinets would or anything Here's else. Here's the thing, you're probably cleaning your kitchen count, uh, counters with some type of yeah, chemical yeah. cleaner. Sure. To make sure they're bacteria free. That, that's that's not the food safe. safe. So yeah, I mean, no, that's food safe. So food safe's a big old broad brush, and it's just really hard to say everything's food safe because mm -hmm. I don't want to tell you it's food and you can eat off of this. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't. I wouldn't eat off anybody's countertop, no matter what it was made out of. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you will either. So mm -hmm. when you say that, that word, I'm not, that not mean to be critical. I certainly don't mean that to sound like I'm mm -hmm. critiquing you for saying food safe. I just want you to see what I'm saying when I'm answering you. Food safe is a big old a uh, word like, um, lots of words out there that say one thing and mean another. So that's kind of, trying to bring this in so I don't look like a giant on here. I don't know that I can. Okay, all right. Let's go back over here. We'll show you this one more time. And there you go. That's it softened. And let's make you spin around here. And that's it unsoftened. And I'll soften that one as it dries a little bit make it look pretty new and different all right guys i just rubbed paint all over my phone okay uh-huh oh that's my phone uh, yeah i knew it good thing okay let's see if we've got any questions on here i think we've got we can. so far um you can lay food on this as far as that goes jennifer yeah you can lay I mean, food on I it eat food that fell on the counter yes i eat food all the time that falls on the counter but do did i know that that surface it went on was food safe it's, you're not going to be eating any of this product. It's not going to come off. It's not going to be something that, again, that your child's going to pick up something that's toxic. It's not got any lead or anything like that in it. So definitely it's food safe to that degree. That's the best way I can say it. Um, you know where that question really comes to play into play is whenever I see people say they're going to put uh, urethane onto a chop block in their kitchen. And that is where they prep food and cut up meats and so on and vegetables and you're actually a wooden surface that people are trying to seal and of course you don't want to do that with a, uh, a urethane you want to do that with a natural product so hemp oil and so on work great for that cooking oil whatever you use olive oil whatever you want to kind of cure or your surface with or put it on to make it add you know emollients into the wood but uh, food safe does come into play there because you are going to ingest those things you're going to lay your food down there you're going to cut on it and that kind of thing but Countertops and food safe uh, kind of goes back to that. Dishes, food safe. You know, dishes are food safe, but mainly they're glass. So it's very rare that a countertop is food.
food safe. So that's the reason I'm going to elaborate on that a little longer. <laughs> I, I didn't want to confuse you or make you think I was belittling your comment because it's very valid. It's just a multi-leveled question with a lot of different ins and outs. Okay, guys, hopefully we can answer some more of your questions if you have them, ask them, and we'll show you this as we finish this up, and I think we're probably going to be done in here today, and I'm going to come back and do some more tomorrow. I'll get tired. <laughs> All right, we're going to see you all later. Thank you. Bye.